Hello again, everybody. I'm Jamie. And I'm John. Welcome to the Elvis Archival Preservation Society. If you're a big Elvis fan like us, uh, this is your society, our society, the EAP Society. Uh, we've covered a lot of different things on the channel, and this is absolutely no exception. This is pretty cool. This is dating back to the first truly professional photographs that were ever taken of Elvis um, not too long after his first record was recorded, which is pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. We found a letter, a handwritten letter from William Spear, who was the photographer who took the early publicity photos. And uh, we thought that it's exactly the kind of thing we wanted to share with everybody. It's not something that you hear every day. And uh, we would let uh, Spear uh, tell us the story of photographing Elvis in his own words. And this is what he writes. I photographed Elvis when he was only 19 years old in August of 1954. I owned and operated the Spear Studio with the help of my beautiful wife, Vasil, at 1330 Linden Avenue here in Memphis. The studio is now a hospital parking lot. We specialized in theatrical types, and Bob Neal, Elvis's manager at the time, brought him over for a professional sitting as he had only been photographed at the Blue Light Studio before, and they were a passport studio. Now, this is not exactly accurate. Um, Elvis had done several photo sessions at this time before he went to Spear in August 54, which is barely a month after That's All Right, like yeah. you said. Um, this, um, the point that he's trying to make is that Blue Light, like many of the other places that he had been photographed, was a studio where you just walk, walked in off the street and got your portrait made. And Spear was a, an art photographer. He was a guy who took portraits of famous people um, like Ava Gabor, John Carradine, yeah. Hollywood character actors like uh, Charles Coburn and Edward Everett Horton. Uh, and um, this was the first time Elvis had ever been really handled by a pro. Right. And uh, this is what Spear writes about the experience. He says, I had never heard him sing. But the minute he walked through the door, there was an electric charge about him that I never experienced before. In front of the camera, he came across like dynamite, and I told him he would make a terrific actor, as I had already photographed the best. <laughs> Little did he know. <laughs> exactly. About four exposures in, we ran out of costume changes that he had brought. It was then that my wife, Vasil, had the terrific idea of taking off his shirt. He was embarrassed at first, but finally agreed. And those turned out to be the best pictures ever taken of Elvis, quotes are William Spears, along with my favorite that I call the floating headshot. <laughs> now, I'm not certain, but I think that this is the shot that he's talking about. It's got to be. Elvis's yeah. face illuminated against a dark black background. Yeah. Would make a really good Velvet Elvis if somebody it wanted to do it. It would make a, a really way. good Velvet Elvis. The other thing that's interesting about this uh, this shot is... This kind of this kind of composition picture was generally done for female actors or actresses. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess well today we'd say female actors. Um, not generally done for guys, right? So, so from the very beginning, there was um, there was something that kind of crossed barriers to a certain. There degree. is sort of a an ambiguous sensuality about Elvis. Yeah. You know, he yeah. used eye makeup and everything that was oh, yeah. also not standard for guys at the time. Exactly. Um, and um, this is just one of the shots that Spear did. I don't think it was ever used originally, uh, but these others up here, uh, this one that is known as the Tony Curtis look. Yeah. And uh, the second one, which is the most famous Spear shot, was on everything in 56 oh yeah i i, I love that picture the we, colonel, we actually recreated that for my graduation shots but i've got <laughs> this awesome. i've got my hair's a heck of a lot longer so, i mean it looks i mean yeah uh, I mean, nobody's as beautiful as elvis but my hair was just ugly for that but that is such a good uh such a good picture it's just classic i'll tell you something interesting about this shot um when i was visiting with scotty moore he told me that he had owned this watch that he's wearing in this. Really? And uh, like apparently Scotty's watch when they were in Vegas in 56 had broken and Elvis gave him this watch, which he wasn't wearing anymore. Oh, okay. And Scotty kept it for all these years and eventually gave it, gave it to a recording artist that he worked with. 
fascinating. Yeah. But like when Colonel got a hold of these pictures, he put them on sheet music. He put them on fan club stationery. Yeah. Uh, the Tony Curtis one is on the cover of the Mr. Rhythm concert program. Mm-hmm. These are widely known photos of Elvis. And I think it's a testament to the work that Spear did. Oh, yeah. The it's, composition is incredible. Like the, the, the lighting, even behind Elvis. The variation in lighting. Yes. It is and you can tell that's somebody who knows what they're doing. Right. That is that is the testament to an art photographer. He knows how yeah. to kind of sculpt the image and define the boundaries of what you're seeing with light. Yeah. Um, he tells another story here about uh something that happened after this session. Uh it says uh, later he sent his mother and father to be photographed <laughs> and also a few girlfriends. One time he came along and I'm afraid I hurt his feelings when he was singing while I was trying to take a picture of one of them. And I told him to cut out that howling (laughs) as I was trying to concentrate on photographing my subject. Bob Neal offered me his contract for $10,000 once, but that was like a million then. Uh, After all the famous people that I have photographed, I hate to be best known by just the Elvis photos, although I am very proud of Elvis and his pictures too. Sincerely, William Spear. That's a beautiful letter. Very cool. Now, I I found one other picture that I thought was very relevant. Spear talks about um, having taken the pictures of Elvis's uh, girlfriends. Yeah. And if you look in this picture from 1956 in Audubon Drive, you not only see the famous Spear photo in a hand-tinted version on the wall, Mm -hmm. which suggests that Elvis liked these very much. Yes. But if you zoom in on the table, you can see... One of the girlfriend photos by Spear. Yeah. I uh, I can't tell exactly. It might be Barbara Hearn. Um, I, think it, I think it could be, yeah. But uh, it's definitely the Spear style, uh, mm-hmm. the high, uh, high key lighting. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's just kind of a testament to how much Elvis liked his photographs. It would be interesting. I would love to get a hold of, um, I mean, obviously there are so many really cool uh Elvis pictures. Right. It'd be kind of interesting to see who all Elvis took yeah. to to Spear. Yeah, that'd but, be great. You know. And that's something that is probably exists in the Graceland archives. Oh. May may well. Uh, this is Do you the, think they bought just the do you think they bought all of the, the Elvis related shots or just the Elvis shots? I know they own uh, the the original negatives of all of the Elvis shots. Sure. And if if the original negatives of the Vernon and Gladys session mm-hmm still existed those would probably be in that collection too mm-hmm. i'm not sure if they own the others yeah see so that's the you know anyway we thought that was a neat story Big wanted time. to share it anything else you got jamie no just um i mean oh i love that one yeah that's cool like that is actually a great gospel cover it would be that yeah. i don't think anybody's done anything with especially considering that it's sort of the, the way it's lit lights just around his face, and you can see it against the wall too. Right, and it has this almost angelic, you know, like the way that they would, the way they would do like stained glass lighting on angels. Right, where they like just around their face is a little brighter than it is everywhere where else in the frame. Yeah, uh, so that would work well uh, for that kind of a thing. Yeah, one of the things that uh, Spear says, and there's actually a second letter that mostly covers the same stuff, but there's one other detail. Uh, he mentions that like with nor- with normal people, you might get a good exposure out of like one out of every eight or ten. Yeah. But with Elvis, every single one was great. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, just he said it was just because the camera loved him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can you can definitely tell. The, uh, some of us have to take about 300 shots to get five good ones. And they uh, that's that's cool. Of course, then again, I don't know. I mean, I am not William Spear when it comes to taking <laughs> photographs. This man. This man knows it takes me like an hour in Photoshop to get what this guy did with natural light. Exactly. <laughs> and I'll tell you, um, my dad was involved in helping the gentleman who owns um, William Spears' estate mm. uh, sell some of the photos of Johnny Cash that Spear had taken. Yeah. And uh, some of the other artifacts. Um, and we uh, helped go through a lot of the negatives that he had. And I bought a set of negatives uh, from him. That was uh, of, uh, taken of John Carradine, who was oh, uh, the cool. great character actor by Spear. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I also own um, the original print of the famous "Hands Beside the Face" shot that is signed by Spear and dated '54 and hung in Spear's studio. Oh, 
So like with all of his that he was showing off to yeah. the public, this hung on the wall in there and it has a little uh, a Spear Studio business card stuck in the corner of the frame. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's, that's a really cool historical artifact. Yeah, that's one that's not for sale, for sure. <laughs> no, definitely not. Yeah. Well, but we'll have to, uh, um, it's one of the things that we want to do with uh, the social media stuff is to have a, a picture of various artifacts, whether we've talked about them yet or not, uh, on the channel. And uh, so that way you can see what they are and a little information about where they're from. And that would be, uh, that would be pretty cool, yeah. I think, for people to have a, a decent look at that. That's Absolutely. Pretty, pretty awesome. Cool. Ah, that's, it, there are so many amazing shots uh, of Elvis, and it's, it's really cool. It's a great snapshot, you know, a month after That's All Right Mama was recorded. Right. At most, like a month and a half. At the dawn of his career. And here's what's crazy about that. If you think about this is only a month after. And if we think about the Jim Reed photograph, which was the one that was um, right, right after That's All Right Mama. Yeah. Um, like, and here's one. This is July 15th at Blue Light Studio. And look how different he looks in all of these photos. Yeah. Like, it's really kind of hard to track when they were taken. It is. Um it looks like he's doing his hair like uh, Bill Haley. It almost does. He's got the big swoosh at the blue light uh, yeah, yeah. shot. But, you know, the Jim Reed uh, is the famous uh, the newspaper photograph where he almost has, it looks like he has a buzz cut. Yeah, 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 and yeah. And that's just in the space of a month. His hair must have grown like wild, you know, because it's right. totally different. Well, actually, you can do a lot with your hair to make it look a lot flatter than it actually is. Uh, I, I know this from experience. Yeah, so it just depends on what all he's put in his hair that day or didn't. Even in these pictures, uh, like these are not professional pictures, obviously, but these pictures from the eagle's nest, his hair looks so much shorter than it does. This. The That's the one. That's, That's exactly it. Yep. And, and honestly, the difference between this, geez, I mean, the acne on his face and everything, uh, the difference between this and that right. is honestly uh, product. Okay. Yeah. Product and also the way you light it. Mm. Um, if you, and the angle. Right. Because there's a lot that can be done. Um, there's, a, there's a lot that can be done. I wish I had known that back when we took my graduation shot. <laughs> Bedded my hair down. I had, I had, I, I've always had very thick hair. I actually have to thin it. Elvis's hair was very thin. Right. And it's, so much easier to do stuff. I mean, I'd rather have the thick hair so I can thin it out. I'd rather have to thin it out than, right. than have the opposite problem and have it be wispy and not do anything. But like, um, what's fascinating about the spear shots is the difference between that shot and that other blue light shot and the spear shots. Elvis looks like he does in 56 in, in the spear in shots. In the spear shots, right. He looks much more... Um... Polished. Yep. He looks polished. He looks mature. And and, and the lighting. The lighting. It makes such does, a big difference. The, the, the definition. The definition in lighting makes all the difference. I mean, it's dramatic. It's cinematic. Right. And if somebody knows their lighting, that's where, you know, that's, and that's an artist. This uh, went over so well that afterwards, all of the artists that were managed by Bob Neal at Sun were photographed by Spear. Yeah. He photographed Johnny Cash. He photographed Carl Perkins. He photographed Billy Lee Riley, um, Warren Smith, um, even guys who weren't at Sun. Eddie Bond, he photographed. He never photographed Jerry Lee that Interest I could find. But, Interesting. Um, Jerry Lee did have some very good, I think by that time, uh, Sun had grown enough that they actually went outside of Memphis for photographs. Because I know that Jerry Lee was photographed by Maurice Seymour, okay. who was a famous uh, showbiz photographer that worked out of Hollywood, I think. Hmm. And um, maybe Bruno of Hollywood, too. Two of the really big uh, okay. guys who photographed actors, you know. Huh. Wow. Very cool. Well, that's a neat, uh, that's a very interesting look at some of the earliest shots, the, some of the earliest professional shots of uh, Elvis ever taken. And I uh, hope that you've uh, gotten a kick out of this. Um, I, I do want to say real quick, um, I had to break this out because I, I just, I love this. I love this. I was actually one of the models for the, uh, for these jackets that were made in Japan. And uh, so they sent me one 
And this is, you know, one of my prized. I can't believe the the out, the amount of craftsmanship um, is uh, in this. So I had to break it out for you guys. So anyway, uh, if uh, if you enjoy these videos, uh, like, comment, subscribe, share, let everybody see this stuff. Uh, we want to share it. You know, we want to grow the channel. And the best way to grow the channel is for people to see the channel and see the videos and for people to enjoy the content and for people to become members. The best way we can grow the channel and to do more of all the wonderful things we want to do is to have a whole bunch of EAP Society members. Go to eapsociety.com and you click on become a member, which will take you to patreon.com forward slash EAP Society. We have a lot of different membership options. Uh, some that are very easy and attainable for everybody and some that are more fantastical. Uh, and those are just, you know, those are there for fun. And uh, so if you want to join, if you want to support the channel, we would greatly appreciate it. If uh, money's tight, that's all good. Then uh, just like, share, comment, subscribe. Uh, let us uh, let us know if there's a topic that uh, you would like us to cover, something you'd like us to take a deeper dive into. And uh, we're always on the lookout for uh, anything kind of any any kind of historical artifacts, whether it be in Elvis's life or the time just after, because we were able to live through some stuff that people can't do now because so many folks are past now, and there's so many opportunities that we had that don't exist anymore. We were lucky enough to come of age in the era where you could hang out in Memphis and just meet people who had yeah. played an important part in Elvis's career. Yeah. Uh, like Sam Phillips and Scotty Moore and yep. all of the guys in the Memphis Mafia. Oh, yeah. Like the, the Jordan Ayers, Um I, I, I tell everybody, and I've said this on one of the other videos too, is like uh, one of the first uh, wedding presents I ever got, actually the first wedding present that my wife and I got um, was from Gordon Stoker and we will use that toaster until it dies and then it will go back in its box which we've also saved and will never be thrown away <laughs> it does not matter because that's too cool oh, that is fantastic um, yeah and uh, Gordon was absolutely lovely uh, got to know so many people um, you know James Burton um, who's absolutely lovely DJ Fontana uh, and sadly you know a lot of those folks are not around anymore and but even the atmosphere that existed back then, even minus the the people that we would think of as celebrities uh, and the people that were close to Elvis, even that atmosphere is is a very different thing now, for reasons that I understand. But uh, it's still something that it's it's hard to fathom if you weren't if you didn't experience it. So we want to we want to preserve as much of that as possible and present that. So that way future generations know what it was like. Um, so that does not get lost to history. So when you become a member, if you are able to do that, we greatly appreciate it because that helps us to find more things. And we want to be even more active. And the more members we have, the more budget we have to do that. And we want to bring people into the studio, you know, while the folks are still around, we want to, we want to bring them into the studio and uh, have them share with you their experiences and ask them some questions that they've never been asked before uh, to give a, a richer perspective on uh, their time, either with Elvis or, like I said, the, or the times after. And uh, then you get uh, neat little time capsules like this with the spear, uh, with the spear photographs and his his own words talking about that. Uh, and that's stuff that uh, we can provide. So glad you're here keep it here. I am Jamie. And I'm John. And thank you very much for uh, supporting and checking out the EAP Society. Until next time, be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And always, TCP. My society, my society, here with all the friends I want to see. Don't need no high society to get me where I want to be. My society, yeah, that's for me. My society, yeah, that's for me. Oh, my society, yeah, that's for me.